All right, guys, it's the middle of July and it is time to see how the garden is doing now. So we have a permaculture garden, zero pesticides, zero herbicides. The only thing that we use to control the bugs are traps and different animals that will come in and take care of some of the pests for us. We like to encourage lizards and birds and we have chickens and ducks and geese um, that we own that come through and do their job in the garden as well and it's been really neat this year to see how the parasitic wasps come in and take out the hornworms by laying their eggs on the back of the hornworms and um, their babies actually eat their way through the hornworm in have come in some dragonflies, which actually eat the mosquitoes. It's so neat to just see how the system takes care of itself if you let it. At night, I can hear the screech of the owls. During the day, we can see the big hawks flying overhead. Both of these two are taking out the rodents that would normally come in and eat the fruit or veggies that we have just been waiting so hard to eat ourselves. If we start to notice that there's too many of a specific type of pest, we come up with ways to trap those pests instead of put poisons and toxins into the soil that will then um, cause problems to us as we eat the food that's growing in that soil or cause problems to the beneficial bugs. All right, so enough about that. Now, let's go check out how the garden's doing. the loofah. So if you remember when I made my first YouTube video for the garden for this year, these were just flowers. They're getting much larger, closer to being ready. So some of these are kind of on the smaller side. There are some big huge ones in here. Let's see if we can find one. Oh yeah, look down here. All right, look how big these are. Gigantic. I can't even hardly lift it. I wish I could weigh it to tell you just how heavy it is, but with Lufa, you want to leave them on the vine until they start to dry out and they won't be heavy anymore. Um, that's when they're like ready for harvesting. And then right behind them, we have the grapes. And the kids have been coming out and eating these. They're Concord grapes, so they're ready when they turn purple like these ones. You can see a nice dark purple one down here. So we've been picking them and they seem to like ripen like a couple here, a couple there on each of the, I don't know what you call those clusters. Yeah. So we just get them as they ripen and the kids like to eat them. I would love it if I could make actual juice out of them. Declan just came. He's going to pick some while we're going along here. <laughs> yeah, bud. Just get a purple one, not the green ones. Oh, that's tricky to get. <laughs> so cute. Little tiny fingers. Can you get it? Good job. All right, coming back here. So we got some more loofah here. I should count them because I bet there's like 60 on here. These ones I didn't even plant this year. They overwintered from last year. That's a lot. It's really remarkable. They're really like mostly grown as annuals, which means you replant them year after year. But they, this one, for some reason, survived. I have really mild winters here, so I'm sure that's part of it. Oh, look, this is my grapevine I just planted this year. I need to come in and pull it up.
these grasses I've been letting grow right here because we're on the end of a dead end and I don't really like that when people turn around they can see into my yard so the more crazy bushiness I have going on out here the better uh, I found a really funny loofah <laughs> your funky shape all right that's the front Declan did you get some more grapes want to show me purple. did you get a purple one Let's see, show me. Oh yeah, right there. Good. Green it. So this is just on the other side of that fence. I just have a bunch of flowers in through here to bring in pollinators and to create some beauty among all this craziness up here. And then we've just started now planting out some trees and I've purchased the other ones that I want to get for some fruit trees for up here. But they haven't been planted yet. I'll just give you a quick little glimpse down here and we'll go down there and I'll show you what's planted down there. So I've got some succulents in right here. This is the lavender and it's done a lot of blooming already. And these ones are ready to come off. So throughout this bed, there's lots of flowers and then there's blueberries and raspberries and golden berries, a couple different varieties, an eggplant, and then lots of flowers. And I really like to kind of hide my fruits in with the flowers here so that the birds hopefully won't find all of my fruits. And it seems to work pretty good. And then the other thing I wanna tell you about the blueberries is I have them at different seasons. So some are early, some are mid, and some are late. And all of them are low chill hours because in San Diego where I live, we don't get a lot of, um, we don't get a lot of cold weather. So they have to be able to still produce without getting tons of cold weather. Got some flowers mixed in here. This is chamomile. This, is, this here is a raspberry vine, so or a cane, I guess, a raspberry cane. So usually you would like tie them up so they're up high. And at the beginning of the season, I wasn't sure what I was gonna do. I probably will still train them up for next year, but for this year, they're just kind of hanging everywhere. Got some Melissa. This eggplant, I planted last year and it died all the way back. And then after winter, it started to grow again. Got a big old eggplant in here. <laughs> it's awesome. It's probably getting pretty close to harvesting. This is a volunteer sunflower. A lot of them have started to go to seed. You don't um, take your seeds off until this outside part turns brown and you know your seeds are ready inside. Some more raspberry canes. I had my geese out here for a few weeks and they kind of ate some of the tops off that were hanging down. You can see them right here. So the geese were hanging out in the front yard for a little while and you can see they really liked <laughs> the tops of the raspberries. That's probably where we were getting some fruit. This big old thing is a Cosmo. And they make the most beautiful flowers. And this one is gigantic. This this whole thing here, this is all just one. They're not supposed to be quite that big, but I don't know. I'm doing something right here. And it is hiding the blueberry bush. We've got some blueberries on there. Seems to be working out pretty good. Having them hide. Enough where we can hardly find them. <laughs> And Tyler came through and picked some for the kids today. There's a couple more. These are some more raspberry canes. So if I'm wanting to tie these up before they get hard, I should probably do it soon. You want to tie up your canes before they are really hard because then they're hard to move them. 
So while they're still soft and pliable, you want to tie them up. This is zebra mallow. What pretty flowers. This is a blueberry bush. I just planted this one this year. So it's kind of taking like the hit from um, transplanting it, but it still made us blueberries and they were yummy. Roly polies, you're not supposed to eat my plants. Thanks. Another raspberry cane. I wish they had the raspberries on them so I can show you the different varieties that they are, but I don't know what they are until I see the actual raspberries on it. And these are more cosmos coming. They just sprouted themselves from the seeds that dropped from the cosmo that was here earlier in the spring. This is the first of our trees up here. Hi bunnies! This is Snowball and Marshmallow. And they give me lots of fertilizer for the garden. And some beautiful roses out front. These are our two banana trees we brought over from our old house. They were just little teeny tiny babies when we brought them here and they're getting nice and big but they haven't produced us any fruit yet. And then back here these are some zebra mallow that were flowering like crazy but now they're on their way out. And then here we have some kale and I pick this kale and give it to the rabbits. And then the geese, these. <laughs> this is my pineapple and it looked beautiful until I let the geese come in the front yard. And they nibbled them all down. Darn. And this one looks a little better than the other one, but it's still, you can tell that those geese just had fun chewing on it. Even though it doesn't look like they actually ate it, they definitely chewed on it. This is the asparagus bed. This is um, asparagus that is on year two. So you don't actually harvest until year three so by next year we'll get some it's kind of on its way out and then here i've planted a few mangoes from seed and papaya trees from seed and these are all going to go somewhere on the property we're still trying to decide exactly where we're going to put them i think by the pond though so the loofah that grew from seed are only this big now so you can tell how the ones that grew from last winter that overwintered are doing a lot better than the first year loofahs. Here's my two newest fruit trees. I gotta find a home for them. I haven't decided where I'm gonna plant them yet. This is the blackberry bush. And someday I will have perfected the art of keeping my goats where they belong. <laughs> There's Opal, hi Opal. And they will not eat all my blackberries, but for now they're eating my blackberries. But luckily my neighbor gives us all of hers cause she is just the greatest. Well, I feel like I will be lucky if I ever end up with any Marion berries here because <laughs> my turkeys are crazy. <gasps> Protect their roots. Protect their roots. <laughs> oh, they're so funny. But I just planted these this year and I'll probably separate them into several more containers next year. Because <laughs> uh, the animals, they like to come in here and dig around. Just coming down here into the garden. I put in this arch here and the <laughs> scooter. <laughs> the um, grapes here just got planted maybe a month ago and they've started to grow up. This is another banana tree that has now got some pups growing. And these were gifted to us, so we're not sure what variety they are. And coming down here. I've got more of these zebra mallows and turkeys, oh, silly turkeys. So we've got two dwarf mandarin trees hiding back here and then this is that other banana tree. Hiding behind the chicken coops here we have a mango tree and a lemon tree. Really no wonder why I haven't got strawberries over here. <laughs> Since you guys have been eating everything in sight. All right, I'm gonna head into the garden area. So for the most part, the animals stay out of this area. Occasionally they sneak in. I've got the pool here right next to the garden so that if it's hot, I can take a dip or if the kids are playing, 
I can be right over here picking cucumbers or tomatoes and still be able to watch them. And then also right next to the pool here is a enclosed sandbox. It's basically for the same thing. Then in the winter when it's too cold for the pool, the kids can play in the sandbox if they don't want to be working in the garden. And these two rows here are my cucumber rows. I um, had a really hard time getting cucumbers to sprout this year and finally when they did, this is the space I had left. So I plugged these ones in here. But on this side, these are the pickling cucumbers and then this side is the munching cucumbers. And really, it's been a real experiment to try to see in the garden which side works out better. If I have, like back here, let me move a little bit so you can see it better. If I have cucumbers mixed in with everything else, if they do better, or if I have rows of cucumbers, if they do better. And I think it's kind of about the same. I'll probably do both again next year. Getting a close-up of a pickling cucumber. And this is a regular cucumber. Apples on the tree. I've been caught by the geese. They know I'm here now. <laughs> Hi guys. How are you today? Sebastable geese up there watching me through the fence. The tricky thing is that these guys will eat my plants if they can get through. And they have, of course. Oh, you don't like that the cat's right there, huh? All right, so here we have our Persian cucumber. Little baby watermelon, but hiding back here, if I go through this tomato plant, count one, two, three, four watermelons. <laughs> That's a good producing plant right there. Got a bell pepper benefiting from the shade from the plant above. This is a rattlesnake bean. And it has produced a lot for us already. It's kind of on its way out. So it's very common for the leaves on the bottom to kind of die out as the top ones are starting to thrive more and grow. And that is why I planted the pepper down below. That's because I knew that this would space would open up right as this bell pepper plant was starting to flower. And then we've got some more watermelon trailing out underneath. Pickling cucumbers. Here's a garden sweet cucumber. Lemon cucumbers. Little tiny cucamelons. Yellow pear cherry tomatoes. Chadwick cherry tomato. Sun gold tomato. Mikado tomato. Striped Roma tomato. Sweet basil. The striped German tomato. Rainbow cherry tomato. Cherokee purple tomato. Rattlesnake beans. Rutgers tomatoes. Mr. Stripey tomato. These ones are just now flowering, but these are going to be the Japanese yard long beans. Growing up my tomato plant. Upstate Oxheart Tomato. Golden Midget Watermelon, when this one produces. Marigolds. Amish Paste Tomato. Large Watermelon. Golden Plum Tomato. Thai Basil. Parsley. Evergreen Tomato. Prudence Purple Tomato. Armenian yard long cucumber. Mandarang moon tomato. Cantaloupe. Lime basil. Artichoke. Soybeans. Also known as edamame. Black beauty zucchini. Crimson watermelon. Aunt Molly's ground cherry. Hmm. 
Mexican sweet lime. Peanuts. Sweet potato. Brussels sprouts. Honeydew. Snap peas. Passion fruit. Roly poly squash. Strawberries. Chamomile. Red bell peppers. Kajari melons. Jalapeno. Marigold. Shito sweet pepper. Candy cane pepper. Romanesco broccoli. Sweet red bell pepper. Sweet corn. Kentucky Wonder Pole Bean.